What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you're here. Millions of people every year make New Year's resolutions. And millions of those people make New Year's resolutions that are centered around like lifestyle change <clears throat> or quitting or starting old or new habits. And unfortunately, more people fail to maintain their New Year's resolution than succeed. Like a lot of people find themselves making the same New Year's resolution year after year. Why does it happen? Now, I understand that everyone's different, so this video isn't going to fit everyone. And I'm not giving you the ultimate guide here, just some ideas I have on why this happens. And so the first one is, there's nothing special about the first day of the year. Okay, I said it. Now, the second reason, which is huge for me, it's huge for me, okay, is that people seem to sort of, for lack of better words, like live vicariously through the creation or the establishment of a New Year's resolution. Like, <clears throat> sometimes the excitement of sharing your New Year's resolution with your family and your friends and having them sort of cheer you on and motivate you and tell you what a great idea that is. Sometimes that's enough to sort of trick your mind like on some subconscious level into thinking that you've already completed the task and so you actually never even start it. And it sounds weird, but um, I'll explain it to you in a different example. Like I see this happen all of the time in the sphere of like self-actualization or um, spirituality. Like a lot of people with the help of YouTube can soak up all of this information, you know, right from their favorite YouTuber. And then somehow they believe that they're now on a spiritual path or God forbid they become enlightened. Right? Like, it happens. Like, <clears throat> sometimes you can understand information on an intellectual level. Like, you can listen to someone speak who has 10,000 hours of meditation experience. And so it might appear as if you're gaining 10,000 hours of meditation insight in a single video but you're not because you're not actually experiencing anything about meditation. Like <clears throat> maybe you've done 10,000 hours worth of research about meditation, but that doesn't make you an expert on meditation. It makes you an expert in researching meditation, but you actually have no experience meditating or any sort of spiritual practice. This can happen to people like just learning about it intellectually can provide the illusion of actual attainment, right? Like, it's, it happens. And so for me, that's one of the reasons why I try not to boost it up. I don't talk about my New Year's resolutions like that with people. I keep it a secret, sort of like a game. How long will it take for anyone to notice something different? So the third reason I think that these types of resolutions fail is a big one as well, but I have to use more specific examples because it's sort of like the thinking, the way that we tend to think about our New Year's resolutions is totally backwards. Like, let me explain. Let's say you want to quit smoking. And so you formulate the plan on how this is going to work, how you're going to quit smoking. Maybe it'll be through a prescription aid, right? Maybe you will simply try to quit cold turkey. Maybe you will quit cold turkey and get rid of all of your um, cigarette paraphernalia, like your ashtrays, all of the butts, the empty boxes, the trash. You know, maybe you'll take a new route home from work so you miss the store even, right? And so, so you do all of this planning, but still, Smoking is on the brain because you're thinking about quitting smoking, but still the cigarettes, the thought is still in the brain. So how could you ever quit smoking cigarettes when all you can think about is smoking cigarettes? Like 
It doesn't matter what form the thought takes, whether you say, I'm quitting smoking cigarettes, or you say, I'm going to smoke a cigarette now. This, this still the same, the subject is there, it's smoking. So smoking is on the brain. So how will you think about smoking all of the time and somehow avoid smoking? There's an old saying, right? Hang around the barbershop long enough, you're gonna get your hair cut. And it's the same deal. Like as long as that smoking is on the brain like that, you're going to smoke. The only way for you to stop smoking is to not think about smoking anymore. If you never thought about smoking anymore, you wouldn't smoke. See, but as long as you have these thoughts that are centered around the ordeal of smoking or the ordeal of quitting smoking, it doesn't matter. It's still the same. Or let's look at a different example. Like sometimes people want to make resolutions like I'm going to lose 50 pounds. And how will you lose the 50 pounds? Well, it'll be because I stop eating hamburgers. I stop eating fast food, you know, or I stop eating this, stop eating that, cut back on this, less sugar, all of these restrictions. But any diet that is restricting in nature, any diet that restricts any part of your diet will ultimately fail. It's not sustainable. Okay. A diet should be about expanding. That's the mindset when you go into expand. It's not quitting eating fast food. No, you're starting to eat apples and oranges and bananas instead. So you're starting new things. And this has a, a crazy effect because like, let's say you switch to a totally plant-based diet and you're totally exploring new realms of food that you never knew existed. You're discovering new likes and new dislikes. And it's great, right? Um, <clears throat> this, like you'll get used to people looking at you funny and asking you questions about your diet choices and it will get you out of your comfort zone. And before you know it, maybe you'll wear that jacket that you bought two months back that you were afraid to wear. You know, this will expand your entire comfort zone, potentially. Just a simple diet change. But a diet should be open. So thinking about it, um, restricting, it makes this just a bad experience, right? Like something that's not really, you're not really looking forward to your breakfast now because you can't have this. But no, you should be looking forward to your breakfast because now you're having this. You know what I mean? And so sometimes the thinking about resolutions is, is backwards. Like you need to open yourself up to new possibilities. That's what it is. It's a sacrifice, but in a sacrifice, nothing is lost really. It's an exchange. You're exchanging something for something better or something bigger, something that you really want. You see what I mean? Anyway, I don't believe in fortune, but good luck with your New Year's resolutions.